It's Charlene, a.k.a. Island Girl Diamond Painting Journal, and welcome to my channel. And uh, we have another whip and shot today for you all. Um, I did say I will try to do one uh, at least once per week. So, here we go. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it is. Oh, my gosh. Where are my manners? Welcome to my new subscribers, because I did think, I think that I did get. Uh, one or maybe two and uh, two re returning viewers so happy to have you with me oh wow it has been such a week guys such a week I um wow there's just so much to talk about um, <clears throat> but you know you guys know I don't like long videos so I will try to keep it as short as possible um, but then, yeah, I, I jibber jabber away and I get carried away and, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so, guys, um, I am actually recording on Sunday. It is uh, the 17th, but uh, this video may come up on uh, Monday, maybe Tuesday, depending uh, on what happens on Monday and Tuesday. And I'll tell you why a little later on. Um, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, <clears throat> oh my god, so yeah guys, um, this has been quite a week. I'm using Ling Ling today. Hi Ling Ling, say hi. Ling Ling. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I'm working on this diamond painting and I'm finding that my regular single placer is not picking up my round uh, drills very well. But I love this square tip. Uh, ironically, the square tip works great with uh, squares and rounds. Um, so, yeah. <clears throat> so, new, news, guys, in the news. Um, well, <clears throat> I was contacted recently by a diamond painter with her own channel recently. And... Uh, she totally blew my mind <laughs> with what she she had to say and what she wanted to do and seriously guys i was so mind blown by her and uh what she said and what she has done um i i am at a loss for words really i am at a serious loss for words and you guys will see that uh, sometime soon you know <laughs> I'm, I'm just so grateful I'm just so so grateful I'm not sure what I'm grateful for yet <laughs> but um, yeah so I it, I don't want to let the cat out of the bag just yet because um, I don't know what coming let that be your clue <laughs> but so yeah i'm just i'm just waiting on her to see or waiting on whatever it is to see what's really going on um <clears throat> so yeah that's a little surprise coming up on the channel guys um like i said i don't want to say too much about it because i'm not entirely sure what it is um but when it gets here we will know uh, I will know together with you I guess <sighs> and uh, oh also in uh, good news um, to bring for you all I got a message on Friday now today is Sunday but I got a message on Friday from my old job and for those of you who don't know, I am a contract worker and I work in the school system locally and I do the paperwork in the schools. So my contract was over and I have been home for two weeks and I got a call back on Friday and 
and I have to go in tomorrow. It looks like my contract will be renewed. And I will be going back out to work soon. I don't know exactly when. But I have to go tomorrow to a meeting. And then we will get the details. So guys, I am super, super, super excited for that. Because if all goes well, I will have a new job contract. And that would mean income <laughs> and uh, you guys need to understand um, <laughs> income is always good yes but um, in my in my case like I'm not ashamed to say um, because I work for an honest dollar you know my last job paid just about nine thousand US per year. That that's my what I earned, and um, it doesn't sound like much. It isn't really. Um, there are actually people here who work for a lot less than that. So I am thankful for what I had, and if I get a job renewal, it would mean just about the same thing. Um, I would be getting back but I live in a home where there are two other persons working that would be my uh, mom and my stepdad and uh, they work for a lot less than that I'll tell you a lot less than that but you know when you pool all your salaries together you can budget and make something happen so that's actually what we do so you know, it, the last two weeks it has been on just the both of them. I mean, I have my little savings and whatever I had. I have been on a no buy since uh, October because um, I wanted to save as much as possible. I I did my best. I bought my Christmas presents for my niece and nephew ahead of time so that, you know, in case I didn't get anything. I'd be covered. I bought medications for myself to last me till the end of the year. <sighs> yeah, I just wanted to make sure I was covered for a few months. Um, just in case, you know, I didn't get anything quite right away. But getting that call on Friday was so good and so welcome. And I'm so grateful. I'm thanking <laughs> everyone who sent out, you know, well wishes and nice vibrations, good vibrations to me. Thanking the high heavens for grace, you know, for the blessing. Um, so, yeah. So, tomorrow I am off early to the head office to hear what they have to say and if I am offered another contract of course I am going to sign my name on the dotted line and if I do get a contract tomorrow that means I'm back out to work probably on Tuesday so no more lazy days at home <laughs> bye bye extra vacation back out to work I go and a hectic schedule I will complain about it, but I'm grateful for it. Trust me, I am grateful for it. Um, the money is always welcome, especially at this time of year. So yeah, um, that's really it concerning me and, and my updates concerning myself, actually. Um, I am well, otherwise, I mean, I am dealing with chronic pain. Oops. But... Um, some days I'm good, some days I'm not so good. I will have a flare up with regard to pain, but I persevere, I press on. Um, sometimes I press on lying down, but <laughs> I press on. 
so yeah other than that I'm all good it's all good I'm just really looking forward to hearing what's going to take place tomorrow and I'm still crossing my fingers that it's going to be the best news so yeah I am um, you guys I'm not working you can tell I'm not working on Mary did you know um, because I had bad drills I would have mentioned the bad drills to you on my last video and um, so yeah I am waiting on replacement drills and uh, when that comes I will resume Mary did you know so yeah so guys I I got some really good feedback on my last video um, I thought it would have been boring um, because I'm not a very animated um, chatter I'm not I'm not good at telling stories uh, people have I, I tell people all the time I cannot tell a joke to save my life if I tell a joke it would seem very bland and uh, uninteresting and you know I, I nobody would want to hear it so um, I'm not very good at narrating or you know painting a picture for people with my words um, I people have often told me that rather than seem animated and interesting and exciting I tend to relax people with my voice um, I'm good at uh, apparently the sound of my voice makes people feel very relaxed rather than get them interested <laughs> I've been told that a lot so <clears throat> yeah I, I my thought was just you know I hope I don't bore people to sleep you know make people go plots onto their whips while I'm chatting so but I am so happy guys that whatever I had to say last week you know concerning um, you know what Christmas is like in my country the little history I'm, I'm glad that it was interesting to you guys and um, I am cramming my neck to see how much time has gone by 12 minutes okay so <laughs> yeah um i'm glad that it was interesting to you and uh it didn't bore you and um that it piqued the interest of many because um i think a lot of you all seemed interested in hearing what happens in another country at christmas time i mean most of you all are in the u.s and you all know what goes on in your own country you have your own traditions and everyone has their own way but you know hearing what goes on in another country in some detail uh, can seem quite interesting at least to me and that's why I'm doing it um, for like-minded persons to have that insight so guys I did promise you now last week we talked about Parang music and I gave you all a little sampling of it and um, I did promise you that today we'll talk about food but we are going to talk about food because I'm telling you food is like a major thing at Christmas time here um, what is this it's a hair okay okay now some of you all oh here it is looking for my tweezers I know some of you all go have pets and uh, okay got it I go nuts when I see debris on my cat on my canvas I don't like debris on it at all I open this is why I open just small spaces and I work on small spaces at a time and when I'm not working on it it's covered and everything else is covered I don't leave wide open spaces uh, going and uh, oh you guys I don't know if you're seeing this but um, when I'm working on a I, I just discovered this actually with this kit I'm going to turn the camera so be aware there you are 
so this is a bubble boot right and you are seeing my kit rolled up in there this is the finished portion now I did tell you guys I have a small workspace and I know some people when they complete they let their canvas you know go over the edge of their work table I can't do that here so what I do on my small workspaces I roll what I've already completed and in order to protect it to protect the drills to protect it from dust and all of that all I did was open the bubble boot because we normally open the bubble boot on an end on either side of the end and we take the kit out what I did was split the bubble boot open so it was a wide sheet and uh, <clears throat> I rolled it back up and I taped the two ends so it was left with like a like a tube but with the the side split open and all I did was I rolled my the finished portion of the kit and I tucked it in there so it's protected uh, in the bubble boot <laughs> so yeah um, little invention there that I kind of came up with now what was I saying I forget anyway <laughs> sorry um, I tend to do that I, I get sidetracked and then I forget what I was talking about um, yeah I was talking I think I was talking about food and so on food is a major 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 part of our culture here um, in Trinidad and Tobago we eat like there is no tomorrow particularly at Christmas time now Trini um, I will say Trinis Trinis will say that uh, you know they love their belly and that is so true we do any excuse now we have a lot of public holidays here we have like I'm still looking at the time we <laughs> we have like uh, 28 public holidays on this country so yeah we have a lot of public holidays and uh, unofficial holidays actually and um, we we always take the the time it's an excuse to cook something and we do a lot of cooking here we do we love it but Christmas time I know in the US you guys have Thanksgiving and that's might be a much bigger holiday than Christmas for you I'm not sure um, but you guys do turkey and I think people do turkey again come Christmas I'm not sure um, in this country we do ham we do a lot of ham pork is like king <laughs> yeah we eat a lot of pork here at Christmas time and I will oops I turned off my white pad okay there we go yeah I will get into pork later on in another whip but um, we do a lot of ham here and let's see what color do I want to do next what is that 37 yeah but today I want to talk to you all uh, about a particular drink that is synonymous with Christmas here in the Caribbean and uh, I don't think many of you all will know about it but at the end of this video I will put uh, another video I will attach a video clip and uh, I will also attach a recipe for you guys to see how it's made and I am talking about sorrel s-o-r-r-e-l sorrel now if you've never heard about it um, it's a beautiful strange looking plant it's actually I think it's a fruit and a flower at the same time um, 
No. It's it if you see it you will think it it looks almost alien. You know, because there are it it has petals, yes, but the petals are strange looking and it's a little fuzzy, furry, although it's very bright red. And at the base of the plant there are like little spikes coming out of it. And uh it, it looks weird. I will again, like I said, attach a photo at the end of it. But sorrow is something that is drunk at Christmas time in every Caribbean home. When you visit someone at Christmas time, that's what you are given. When they offer you a drink, it's not tea or coffee they offer you sorrel and that's a cold something that you serve cold it's kind of like you your guys uh cranberry juice sort of like that <clears throat> so sorrel uh the plant is actually um believed to have come from west africa um that is where they believe the plant originated from and uh, West Africa of course was where most of the slaves came from so that would have mean I would have meant that um, when the slaves were being captured and brought over perhaps one or two of them were harvesting the flower when they were caught and maybe they they held it in their hand and they brought it literally brought it over because they didn't come over it wasn't like hey like we're going on a little holiday pack you know pack bring whatever you want we're going on a holiday nope they came here by force obviously so I, I am going to believe this is how I see it in my mind's eye maybe a woman was harvesting her plants she was caught maybe she had a few in her hands and she was caught and she held on to it maybe she stuffed it into some part of her clothing you know and she came over with it maybe she ate the petals because you can do that you can eat the petals of the plant on the journey and she kept the seed you know not knowing where she's going or what's going to happen to her but that little piece of home that little memory of home in that little seed came <clears throat> all the way over with her that's how I see it in my head so she brings this plant over or that's how it came it could be a man of it or you know but someone then brought the the seed at least over and they planted it and it grew and then it bore fruit they harvested they got a lot more seeds and they planted more and they planted more and they planted more and it spread all over the Caribbean and now it is everywhere locally it's grown harvested and sold here especially at Christmas time because it does not um, according to uh, what I read I'm reading here it it bears annually usually around Christmas time maturing in about six months and growing to about seven to eight feet there are different types grown in the region however the deep red fruit of the roselle which is what it's called actually we call it sorrel here but the proper name is roselle is the most common variety found in the Caribbean you know so 
that that's how I see it. Maybe that's how it, it took place, but I don't know. But I'm just speculating at this time. Um, but that's how I see it. It came from West Africa, and so did the slaves. So again, it's not like they they had the opportunity to pack and come here or to go home and pick up what they wanted to pick up and come here they came here by force so how did the seed come over how did the fruit come over that's a possibility I think so I'm gonna read a part of an article here for you guys in Caribbean homes, sorrel drink at Christmas time is like pumpkin pie to Americans at Thanksgiving. Hardly a meal is served without it, and guests are usually welcomed with a chilled glass of sorrel drink accompanied by a hearty slice of fruitcake. Of course, the sorrel drink is also served at hotels and restaurants and is quite easy to find. For those who want to experience the taste of a Caribbean Christmas. Sorrel drink is also used to make jams and jellies and are available for purchase year round. So <clears throat> what we do with the sorrel guys uh, is well when you harvest it and again like I said I will put up a video of it. You will see what it looks like and uh, when it's harvested what we do we peel the petals off the petals they actually go into a large pot of water and uh, it's boiled with sugar spices uh, spices like cinnamon nutmeg bay leaves um, cloves and it's all boiled uh, with the sugar and uh, then it's strained and uh, when you strain it the pulp from the leaves the petals actually uh, that's what they used to make the jams with because um, it's it's almost like a like a mush like uh, if you've ever had pineapple jam it's like that texture it uh, you can use your food processor and break it down further and then put it back in the pot with sugar and you know make it into a jam but um, some people don't even they don't do that they will just you know they want the drink so they will boil the sorrel to have as a drink and when you boil it like like that it's um very concentrated so it's it's often well, after you strain it it goes into a bottle and it's refrigerated and uh, then you can pour some of it off uh, into a jug and you add some more water to it and you mix and you can add more sugar I guess to taste uh, until you get the consistency uh, that you like so yeah, it is very, very traditional. Oh my God, don't you just hate that? This happens to me like all the time. I am working on a color. I look and I look and I look and I could swear I have gotten everything in that color. And I would empty and I would put it away. And then I would see that I missed a few. Anyway. That always happens to me. I don't know if it happens to you guys. It does happen to me a lot. Uh, what next? I can go with this one. So, yeah. So, sorrel is something that you would see. And, you know, in the Caribbean here, you go walking through the markets. You see them at the roadside. People will just be selling mounds mounds of it huge piles of it and it's pretty expensive because it's in demand everyone wants 
sorrel for Christmas. It's it's one of the must the things that you must have to drink at Christmas time. There is another thing, and sorrel is not alcoholic. So guys, a lot of people like it. People who don't drink alcohol, they love it. It's perfect for children. Sorrel, if you don't know, has a lot of medicinal properties. It's very, very high in um, things like vitamin C, calcium, niacin, riboflavin. <laughs> um, it's said to be uh, high in antioxidants, and um, which is a good thing. Um, it is said to be a deterrent against certain types of cancers and it's an immune system booster so it's actually very good for children now for those of you in the US who want, may, may want to try it if you can get yourself to a West Indian market or a supermarket um, you may find it dried and packaged <clears throat> um, I highly doubt you will find the fresh ones although you may see the plant in some botanical gardens in the US um, but like fresh ones too that would allow you to make it fresh I highly doubt you will find it but I know that they sell it dried and you just open it into your boiling water and it will rehydrate and you boil it and you you, you do the same thing you put your spices in and uh, strain and you add your sugar to taste etc I tried to see if there were any because I've never heard of any uh, legends or folklores concerning the sorrel plant all I can tell you is in the Caribbean it comes it it blooms during Christmas time it's in full bloom and the fruit is available and like I said um, it's a non-alcoholic drink so it's really good for children and for adults people who don't who want something traditional to drink but not necessarily alcoholic now there is another thing that we do drink that is a must in Trinidad and it's something that we call punch creme and it's our version to eggnog but it has a lot of alcohol in it I've never had eggnog and I always imagine eggnog tasting very eggy punch creme does not taste like that it's sweet and milky and you can't tell that there is a lot of alcohol in it but if you don't watch yourself, you will get stone drunk with it. Now, I am not a big drinker. I've never been drunk in my life. I would have an occasional sip of something, not regularly, but occasionally. But, um, and usually that would only be for, you know, Christmas time or New Year's maybe for my birthday you know so really just maybe once or twice for the year um yeah i will put up a video with how to make puncture creme in another video not this one this one i'm showing you uh about sorrel and sorrel like i said it's just synonymous with the caribbean it's it's in every kitchen at Christmas time it's being sold everywhere on the streets you're surrounded by it at this time of the year so yeah that's what we enjoy so so guys I'm gonna end off my whip and chat here like I said I don't want to make it long I will be attaching a couple videos next so you guys can uh, see what sorrel is, what I've been rambling on and on about, and what it's about, and uh, how it's made. 
yeah you guys got a little recipe coming up next so guys thank you so much oh I totally forgot there is another thing that we drink and it's called ginger beer <laughs> you guys will see that sometime soon next week now in my parang video I would have spoken about pastel which is something similar to tamales yes I remember it now it's tamales but we call it pastels here um I'm going to tell you guys about <laughs> our fake trees. You guys use fresh trees. We don't do that here. <laughs> we use fake trees. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you guys next week on the next one uh, about our fake trees and, uh, you know, the influences of the U.S. Christmas, how heavily it is over here, how much we are influenced by it here and uh, think about it Caribbean people singing about snowmen and and white Christmas but we have no white Christmas here but we do buy a lot of cotton <laughs> and those snow in a can business and we spray everything with it to make it seem as though we are having a white Christmas I'm going to tell you guys about that on the next one and I'm going to show you guys about pastel which is our version similar to tamale but it's very traditional here at Christmas time so you guys are going to get that on the next one so guys thank you so much for watching I know it's a very short whip and chat but I want to leave space for those videos that I mentioned um, you know if you like what you saw or heard uh, please consider if you're not a subscriber please consider subscribing hit the bell for notifications and uh, like the video if you liked it if you don't like it that's fine um, but thanks for joining me and I will see you guys on the next one bye bye oh wish me luck for tomorrow <laughs> bye bye